Dreams do not have a filter that your normal, polite, waking self puts up. Welcome to the hidden meaning of dreams with Sweet Georgia Pam. It does matter what the dreamer themselves associates with those things that come up in the dream. Spiritual director, dream expert, author, and educator, Sweet Georgia Pam is here to remind us that dreams are the answer. They're always with you. They know you better than you know yourself, and they're always trying to tell you the truth. There's some back and forth here between you and some awareness. And now your host, Melissa Carter. Pam will work on you, <laughs> work with you one-on-one. He'll, she'll work on you and she'll work with you one-on-one, sweet Georgia. You have no idea what you're in for. <laughs> Exactly. Just keep an open mind. Uh, SweetGeorgiaPam.com is the website where you can set up that one-on-one. Plus, she's got some free stuff we'll tell you about here in a second. Pam, my love, how are you? Well, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm good. I, I, I don't know what to do to go back to a normal schedule beginning today because I have to admit these past couple weeks, I have been glued to everything Queen Elizabeth. And so that's what we're talking about today since her funeral was yesterday. Last night is when her and Prince Philip were reunited. Everybody's talking about that. You know, his his body was moved to be with hers. And I have been, you know, an Anglophile since I was a kid. So I'm one of those people, right? Even my friends are like, really? And I'm like, yes, trivia, the whole thing. But we are dedicating today to Queen Elizabeth because, Pam, you had a dream that was related to her death, correct? I did. I did. And, it, you know, I, I wish that dreams were very direct. I wish that they were very clear and very direct and would say, hey, this is what's going on. But they don't. They're not. And so it wasn't obvious to me until a couple of days later. So I had the dream two, two nights before Queen Elizabeth died. And so it wasn't until she died and it was all over the news and everything that I, that something clicked. And I, and I went back to my dream from two nights ago and I went, oh, my God, that's what it was. That's what it was. That is crazy. Oh, you told me this off air because yeah. Pam had to be the sounding board for a lot of my Queen Elizabeth stuff. And then she was <laughs> like, oh, but I dreamed about it before she died. And I'm like, oh, we got to talk about this. So yeah. explain the dream, your own interpretation. Okay. Now you're kind of interpreting your own dream. Yeah. And yeah. Talk- so, yeah. People can kind of get a glimpse into how I do it for myself, right? My crazy brain. Well, and the first thing I kind of want to say about working with my own dreams, because this is this is something that I think people probably don't realize, is that dreams show us our own blind spots, as well as having the psychic content that they have for prophetic dreams and that kind of stuff. But because they show us our own stuff that we're not seeing, I oftentimes don't know what my dreams mean. So I have to do my own reflective work and I have to do storytelling with people and work with other people so that I can hear the dream from somebody else's perspective and reflect on what it would mean. So anyway, yeah, all that is to say, I had this dream. I didn't know what it meant. And then it clicked for me later. So the dream didn't have the queen in it at all. The dream was about my own mom. Okay. My mom is alive and healthy and doing well. But in this dream that I had, I'll I'll just read you the notes of it. Mom and I are shopping at a thrift store and I was trying to show her a good time because she was mentally fading. And my dad somehow uh, in the dream, so my dad has passed away. He passed away seven, maybe eight years ago now. My dad was somehow in the dream as if she had already passed. He was standing with her. So the three of us were, were in the space together And I was sort of helping her cross over in the dream, like escorting her through to hand her off to my dad. So I woke up from the dream. Now, hearing this, that logical brain that comes on board as soon as you wake up, you would think my first thought is, oh, my God, my mother, I have to, I have to, I have to call her, I have to check on her. And And a little bit that was in the back of my mind, but because I know that dreams are symbolic, because also I've come to peace with what happens if I dreamt of somebody passing and then they do, and I'm okay with that. I, I, in my own personal spiritual work and my inner work that I've done on my belief system, I'm like, it's, it's all part of the, it's, it's part of the process for me. I'm good with it. So it didn't freak me out. It just made me think like, hmm, something has shifted. 
Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Something has shifted. There was no queen in it. There was no royalty. There was no big pomp and circumstance. There was no indication that this was necessarily about the queen. But because your dreams communicate to you in your own personal language, what clicked for me when two days later, there was this big pronouncement and it was this sudden shift. And the shift, uh, when they announced it on that morning, they said, it, it looks like she's fading. Mm-hmm. They basically said, we are now on, you know, death watch for the queen. Everybody's rushing to be with her. And her family was rushing to be with her in her final hours. Just like in my dream, I was with my mom to be with her as she was shifting or fading. And so for me, I had this internal like, oh, that's what it was. This that was is crazy. The, I mean, it was that's, two that's days probably earlier. an insensitive word to say uh, of what we're talking about. But for a lot right. of people, it's wild. how, you know, again, I encourage people who were new to the podcast. We have so many episodes. We've talked about prophetic dreams. We've talked about uh, people who have passed on that might be in your dreams before. And, and we'll repeat these themes because it seems to be prevalent in a lot of people's nighttime stories. But opening up to something that is shifting days before it happens, right? Like explain that a little bit, because, you know, we talk about sometimes thing, you know, dreams are prophetic. Sometimes they're not sometimes, you know, but I love how you said that dreams talk to you in your own language. So are you able to tap into what might be happening in the world through your own sleep patterns? Well, yes, is the short answer. Absolutely. Um, I've just come to trust that my dreams are bringing me what's important for me to see and understand. I used to try to nail it down and go like, okay, fit it in a box. This one's prophetic. This one's not prophetic. This one represents my past. This one represents what's happening in my body right now. This one is a collective dream. This one, you know, represents what's going on outside in society collectively. But I no longer try to put boxes on my dreams because what I've learned is my job is to just have a dialogue with my dreaming mind and to keep that dialogue open. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. my job. I'm not trying to predefine what the dream is trying to tell me. I'm trying to make space during my day for my dreams and my, the symbols and the imagery that's present in my dreaming mind to just show up and continue to move me towards spiritual and emotional well-being. For me, the fact that, I mean, I mean, there are, I'm sure, thousands, probably millions of instances in, in literature and in scientific research of people having dreams that came true or people dreaming of events before they happen. So, yeah, the energy is out there floating around. Our dreaming mind is simply able to let it in. Because we, right. we, the logical brain is turned off while we're sleeping. Well, it's like you said, it's not clear. It's not always clear. And I think for a lot of people, that's the confusing part. And we'll talk about how, you know, Pam work, can work with you on whatever you need interpreting. Because I'm assuming this is what you do with clients is, mm-hmm. you know, they share the dream, but you kind of unpack what it could possibly, what kind of dream it is, what it is for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting how we talk all the time about how dreams are healing for you. But the the fact that she died is a shift. I mean, I try to explain to my young son that, you know, the reason that we're focused on this for so long is because she's pretty much the most famous person in the world. Like this little mm-hmm. frail old lady, regardless mm-hmm. of how you felt about her, it impacted people. They talked about it. You know, I told Pam off air, like, you know, I went to pick up something from my vet and I just happened to get a con- in a conversation with the woman at the front desk. And she was so excited to talk to somebody about she came around the counter and hugged me like we were hugging about the queen in small town, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. She's so profound. And the the energetic response of the whole world shifted, tuned into that. Right. So the fact that it was out there a couple of days before in the, you know, invisible realm floating around, it's not surprising that I had a dream that had some of that same theme to it. And I would bet if we tapped into our listeners, some of them had some of the same experiences. It just, it just, it tends to happen when we have big events 
that people come forward and say, oh, my God, I dreamt about this in whatever, whatever shape or form. I would love to hear those dreams. I would love to hear those dreams. I shared, you know, in a past episode about me dreaming that my dog would die before my dog died. Absolutely. So, I mean, it can happen. So um, if you DM Pam at Sweet George Pam, and then if you want to leave, if you're watching on YouTube, then you can leave comments below and we would love to share those dreams. Oh my God, please, please tell us about it. But I want to take it one step further, Melissa, because you shared something with me when we were talking about it off air that um, deepened my understanding of the dream for myself. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that too, because, you know, dreams are from you to you for you. So this was an experience from me to me for me, tapping into the collective, that's the collective shift that was coming up or that was growing. And who knows behind the scenes, maybe the queen shifted at that time that I had the dream. We don't know. We don't know what was going on. For we don't her. know how that so, happens, but I do think it's a process, not a moment. Right. right. So I right. think that, yeah, she was on her way out long before she actually left. But here's what you said that I, that my brain was like, oh my God, how cool, <laughs> how cool for, for my dreaming mind to pick up on that. And then to, to give that piece to me as well. You said something about princess Anne. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what you were telling me about her? Of course, talk about Queen Elizabeth's daughter and yeah. which part I don't remember. You said, I, I've, what you I've said, said is, a lot, I vomited a lot of royal <laughs> stuff lately. I, I, I kind of want there to be a, a royal version of Dragon Con for you. Oh my gosh! I, I know, you have, right? Like, royal Con, where you can show up and and like. Oh, get- I had a friend. Yeah, I had a friend that said, "Why do you know? It's too bad you couldn't have a viewing party for the funeral." And I'm like, "If it wasn't at six o'clock in the morning, I would have." But anyway, I mean, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, Eastern time. What did I say about what you said? What you said was that watching Princess Anne in the last couple of weeks has been has altered your perception of her. Right. You have. Yes. So a profound amount of respect for her. Right. So for those who haven't been watching, Princess Anne is Queen Elizabeth's daughter and she escorted the body everywhere like it, you know print you know queen elizabeth died in scotland and then was laid and stayed in scotland and then traveled to london and laid and stayed in you know london and princess anne was there escorting her body the whole time and then to on two occasions held a vigil at the casket um so okay. I, yes i just think she got a lot of attention this past couple of weeks that she deserved so for me in my dream I played that role of mm. Princess Anne in the dream. Right. And my middle name is Anne. Mm. And that for me was this deep personal resonance of it, it made me have a profound amount of respect for the mother daughter relationship right. that Anne and Queen Elizabeth have or had in my mind now, mm-hmm. and a profound respect for my own mom. As in me having the same amount of respect for my mother as Queen Anne is showing for the queen now. Right. So it just shifted for me into this also secondary, deeper level of meaning of the mother daughter relationship that and maybe I that have. was the purpose. Maybe that was the purpose of the dream for you. Right. Because you talk about how dreams are there to serve you and mm-hmm. to just add to it that, you know, that was not a obligation that Anne was supposed to perform as a daughter of the royals that was a voluntary effort that she made Mm -hmm. you know but I mean anybody who has that relationship with their mother or in my case I mean I had a close relationship with my mother but my sister was mainly my mother's caretaker and watching that relationship that had been contentious there was there was I don't know a change in my sister in the way that she was trying to handle the situation I don't know it's it there's an there can be an evolution in that relationship during that time as well. And then I was right. thinking with your father, who's already passed. I mean, the first thought I had is that Prince Philip, who's already passed. I mean, I'm a firm believer that that you were not alone when you cross over, right? So like yeah. you were helping your mother cross over yeah. on this side and somebody was there on the other side. And I do believe that there's that exchange. I do believe that, that somebody is there for you. That's my belief system. And so I right. f- found that interesting too in your dream that there yeah. was a Prince Philip figure um, yes. that was there waiting for her to take her yeah 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 so the so those dreams that show up that are prophetic are such a gift to the dreamer themselves like it kind of changes you i'm never gonna forget now 
right. that I have this connection to the death of Queen Elizabeth and I experienced it differently because mm-hmm. of that, because right. I had this close bond or this like uh, peeking behind the curtain, um, this blessing of a, of a dream that then made it a deeper, prof- more profound experience for me. I I literally would love to hear more of these because we we're happy to have more episodes on any topic, any topic. I mean, we we don't have to just do one episode on one one subject yeah. like prophetic yeah. dreams. Social media, sweet Georgia Pam is her handle, so you can DM her on social media, all the socials. Plus, you can go to sweetgeorgiapam.com and contact her there as well. And when you go to sweetgeorgiapam.com, you can find a free downloadable guide called Six Nights to Better Dream Recall for those who I know get frustrated because they cannot recall their dreams. (laughs) And this podcast would last all day if it was up to me, but we'll just leave it at that. And, you know, as we officially say goodbye to Queen Elizabeth. Yes, sweet dreams, everybody. The content in this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Pam Muller is not a licensed mental health professional. If you or someone you know suffers from severe, persistent nightmares, please seek medical help.